The European Union really loves a good piece of tech regulation. First, it was the GDPR, then the DMA, and then the DSA, and now we have the AI Act. Some of it hail it as a milestone, a major win, with Europe leading the way as the first to regulate AI globally. But others argue it's a step backward, claiming Europe is quick to regulate, but very slow to innovate. So who's right? Well, in this video, we'll break down what the AI Act is all about and explore both sides of the debate. The Act aims to ensure the human-centric and ethical development of artificial intelligence in Europe by laying down some ground rules. Essentially, the Act classifies AI into four levels of risk, with each level requiring a different degree of regulation. First, there's level one, minimal risk. This category includes the majority of AI programs, such as AI-enabled video games and spam filters. These are so safe that they don't need any regulation. No red tape here. Next, we have level two, limited risk. Things get a bit more interesting here. AI systems in this category include deepfakes and chatbots. The main rule, be transparent. Users need to know they're chatting with a bot unless it's super obvious. For example, ChatGPT falls into this area. Then there's level three, high risk. Now we're in serious territory. This covers AI in critical areas where decisions and actions can have profound impact on people's lives. For example, transportation, where AI powers self-driving cars, making split-second decisions to keep you safe on the road. Or healthcare, where AI can assist in surgeries and diagnosis. A tiny mistake could have major consequences, so precision is key. Or education, where AI can be used to grade exams and assess student performance. Fairness is crucial here, so these systems must avoid bias with human oversight ensuring just outcomes. Or public safety, where AI and surveillance technologies identifies potential threats. It has to respect privacy and avoid false alarms, protecting everyone without overstepping boundaries. With the new regulation, high-risk AI must undergo thorough risk assessment, use top quality data, maintain detailed logs, and always have a human ready to step in when needed. And lastly, there's level four, unacceptable risk. And here's the no-go zone. AI that plays judge and jury with your life, like social scoring systems, are strictly off limits. Take China's social credit system, where your behavior can earn or lose you points, affecting everything from your travel plans to your kids' school options. These kind of systems are flat out banned in the European Union. So what happens now? Well, the AI Act was officially implemented on the 1st of August, 2024. The countdown has now begun for member states to take action. They have until the 2nd of August, 2025, to appoint national authorities responsible for enforcing AI regulations and overseeing market surveillance. Then, come August 2026, the majority of the AIX rules will kick in. The European Artificial Intelligence Board will play a crucial role in ensuring that the Act is applied consistently across all member states. Alongside this, a scientific panel of experts will provide technical advice and issue alerts about potential risks. Companies that don't play by these new rules could be hit with some serious penalties. Think fines of up to 7% of their global annual turnover for the biggest rule breakers. But is the act any good though? Let's start out with some of the benefits. First up, it's trying to keep us safe. AI's power is immense, but with that power comes serious risks. You wouldn't want an AI slipping up during your surgery or a self-driving car confusing a river for a road. The AI Act is here to prevent those nightmares from becoming a reality. Second, it harmonizes standards across the EU and potentially the world. Any company operating in the EU, no matter where they're from, has to comply with these rules. This not only makes the regulatory landscape easier to navigate for businesses, but also ensures everyone is playing by the same rules across the entire region. But it's not all smooth sailing. Let's talk about some of the downside. Stifling innovation, which can happen for two big reasons, red tape and costs. First, the red tape. The AI Act could turn into a maze of paperwork, especially for high-risk AI. Picture this, in the US, you've got a cool new AI idea and you're off to the races, getting it to market quickly. But in Europe, you might find yourself buried in forms and approvals, slowing everything down. It's a real creativity killer. And then there's the cost. Compliance with the AI Act isn't exactly cheap. For small and medium enterprises in the EU, 
It's estimated they'll need to spend between 1% to 2.7% of their revenue just to meet these regulations. That's a big hit for smaller companies, potentially giving bigger, richer players an unfair advantage. So what do you think of this new AI act? Good for Europe or bad for Europe? Let us know in the comments and please like the video and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to support us further, please consider signing up to Patreon.